mercy never fails. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And all my days, good morning. I've been held in your hand. The moment that I wake up, till I lay my head, I think oh, I will oh, I'm see you the goodness of God. Good morning, good morning. Oh, wow, y'all coming in. Come on in here. Come on in. Hey, my mother-in-law is in here early this morning. Come on in. Good morning, Wenda. Good morning. Allow this song to wash over you. Good morning. Good morning, Dominique. Good morning. Good morning, Cara. Good morning, Barb. So good to see you on here. Darren Gray. Good morning, bro. So excited for your book. So excited for what God's going to do through you in that book. Good morning, Kiana, Larry, Debbie, Monty, Francie Maharaj. Good to see you, Denise. Ruth, allow this song to get, get your heart ready for worship this morning. Jacqueline, as we get ready to get started. Milo, good morning. Jen, it's not early here. You're right, it's not early there. You're right, it's 10 o'clock. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, John. Let this bless you. Let this bless you. Hey, Julie. Storm, good morning. Good morning, Lloyda. Gabriel. Good morning, y'all. Good morning, y'all. Come on in. Let this just wash over your souls this morning. Good morning, Lady O, Jeanette, Lita, Karina, Tori. Good morning. Aaron, his goodness is running after you this morning. Cynthia is running after you. April is running after you this morning. Dave is running after you. Good morning, South Carolina. Come on. It's running after you. You had a rough night. I see that. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come this morning. Believe that. Good morning, Chastity. Rhonda. Let that minister to you. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Hey, Sandra and Charlie. God, Brianna. You're so good. Come on, lift those hearts up. Lift those hearts up right here. Lift those hearts up. God, you're so good. 
We're starting this morning declaring his glory. Jessica, good morning. Let's declare his glory this morning, Jessica. Come on. Palmdale, good to see y'all, the Drakes. Come on. Y'all lift it up. Let's declare his glory. Dana, girl, good morning. Come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, glory to God this morning. Uh, well, good morning, family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Troy, good morning out there in uh, Green Bay. Good morning. Yeah, that's Larissa Tate with Fellowship. We don't have this public yet. I got to figure out how we're going to release this and get this public. But I'm just telling you, it is blessing us. Uh, Aaron Lindsay, it was mixed by Aaron Lindsay Bishop. Um, and uh, our whole worship team, we've got worship that's just going to be flowing out, but this is our, um, this is uh, Larissa and the Fellowship Worship Collective. Um, ah, God is so good. God is so good. Good morning, Asia. Good morning, y'all. So good to see y'all on here. Listen, um, this is the uh, good news today. Uh, morning devotional time with me, um, and I'm I've just been loving it. Uh, God has been so good. Um, uh, Lost Wit, my twin, Carlos Whitaker, man, so good to see you this morning. Been praying for you and Lala and uh, all those birds at your house, man. Uh, <laughs> yo, good news today is where we start the morning off right. We start the morning off together. We start the morning off in the word of God. Yo, check this out. But it cannot be a morning show without a theme song. And this theme song is our morning declaration where we encourage one another. So the regulars, we got regulars. Y'all that's in here already, you know what time it is. Let's start declaring it. Everything's going to be okay because God's got some good news for us today. Amen. Y'all go on, start declaring it. And this is the good news today theme song. Come on, y'all. Good morning. Welcome. Carlos, I got a theme song, dog. It's going to be okay. Come on. Everything is going to be okay. Put it in there. Come on. Come on in here. Everything's going to be okay. I need y'all to write it. I need y'all to type it. I need you to say it because somebody is questioning it. Someone's in a season where they're struggling. Someone, somebody had a rough night last night. Somebody already said it. Somebody, this is a rough week. Anxiety is rising. You're looking at the news and the news ain't getting better. But I'm telling you, there's some good news today. And it is God is on the throne and everything's going to be okay. Somebody needs to hear that today. Someone needs to take a deep breath. Inhale. <sighs> Exhale. Everything's going to be okay. The enemy has been messing with you and just been poking with you in anxiety after anxiety, issue after issue, thing after thing, and you find yourself consumed. Some of you, your actual, your body is tight. Your shoulders are tight. You, you, you're, you're holding yourself in. You're working with the kids all day and everything. Take, take a deep breath, my sister, my brother. I'm telling you, according to the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, he's sitting on the throne and he says, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be, Shane, everything's going to be okay. Betsy, everything's going to be okay. Somebody needs to be encouraged today. Somebody just needs to be encouraged today. You encouraging somebody. In those comments, that just them seeing that, being flooded with that, seeing that on your timeline, everything's going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. Keisha, you, the, Keisha, the one that sings this song is, is in here. You blessing us. That's a declaration. Everything's going to be okay. Your words are blessing us in this season, Keisha. 
Everything's going to be okay. Listen, I've got a word for you today. Oh my goodness. I, I've, been, I've been so excited. We're going to the book of Exodus. We're looking at chapter 16. Book of Exodus chapter 16. Be encouraged. Grab your coffee. Grab your Bibles uh, and come and let's sit in this word together. God wants to encourage you today. Chapter 16. Um, this is when um, the children of Israel had come out of Otis, good morning, bro, had come out of Egypt. Moses did his thing, right? Moses went in, got him out. It was just powerful. It was cool. Um, this is about two months or so later in Exodus, we hear them processing their new season. We hear them processing their new season. We hear them processing their new season as they've come out of Egypt. Egypt, they were enslaved. Good morning, Kyla. They, they were enslaved. They were in captivity. Moses brought them out. And here's their conversation as they have got into their new season, Devon. Here's their conversation as they got into their new season. Listen to this. Uh, I'm going to start it at chapter, chapter 16. I'm going to just jump around in this chapter. Uh, but verse 2, it says, In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we, there we set around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Y'all, it's, it's such a key lesson here. You, you, you got to get this. You got to get this. They came out of Egypt. Now they're in this new season and they left Egypt and they had to come through the desert. They had to come through the desert. But when they got in the desert, they immediately began to long for what they had in captivity. They began to romanticize the former season. They began to romanticize what they came out of. And they didn't have eyes to see the reality of what God had brought them into. There's a be, there'll be a temptation. I, well, I need, to, I need to tell you something. I need to announce to you, if you don't understand it, if you don't understand, if you don't get it, you're, the normal that you've known, you will know no more. The normal that you've known. To go back two months ago or a month ago, that we ain't going back there. There has been a cosmic shift and the season has changed and it changed quick and God has brought us out of where we once was. And to that we say hallelujah. Why? Because God is good. God is sovereign. And if he's bringing me out, I'm trusting the one who's bringing me out. But the dangerous thing you can do, we learn from the children of Israel, the dangerous thing is you can spend the days in this new season longing for the memories and the realities of the last season. And you will miss what God is doing in this season. Let me say that again. You can spend your days now longing for what once was and miss what is. The, today, I want to talk to you about the transition the transition. It's time. It's time for a transition. We've been in this for a few weeks. Some of us in different parts of the country uh, been been in it more and been in less. But at the end of the day, in the spiritual sense, I need you to transition. I need you to go from grumbling to growing. I need you to go from grumbling to growing. They were in a new season, and just because it wasn't what they picked out, nobody picks out the desert. If you're going to pick out your landscape, most folks ain't going to pick out the desert. But, it, but they missed it. They missed it. They saw the, they saw the desert and they started complaining. They started grumbling in the presence of God. What God had brought them out. These are the folks that came through the Red Sea. These are the folks where they, God killed Pharaoh and all of his enemies and set them free. And they sitting around saying, well, at least in Egypt, we had meat. We ain't got no meat in this desert. At least if we sitting around in Egypt right now, we wouldn't be hungry. We'd be getting beat half to death and out picking stuff all day, but at least we'd be eating. You see how the devil will, 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 will give you a perverse mind? He'll pervert your mind. And you will begin to long for bondage because you romanticize the bondage that you was once in. Come on and hear somebody. Some of you are, romantic, you, you are romanticizing the bondage of your past. 
It was a jacked up relationship then. And you left it for a reason. Why are you texting and calling back to bondage? Some of you, you've been texting Egypt on this quarantine. I'm telling you, say goodbye to Egypt. Hello. Hello. Somebody, somebody needs to type that to encourage somebody. My single brothers and sisters, I ain't missed you. I know it's hard. I know this is cuffing season and you would love to be quarantined and cuffed up. But I need you to say goodbye to Egypt. I need you to say goodbye to Egypt. I need you to stop longing for what you missed and what you missed. You weren't healthy then. You weren't healthy in Egypt. Stop romanticizing the bondage of your past. Stop calling folks that you know he was a jerk then. He's still a jerk now. He's just an available jerk. You're just a bored jerk trying to look for an available jerk. Stop that. Come on now. She wasn't no good back then. You walked away from her for a reason. Pastor Humphrey, Pastor Chuck, you walked away. They walked away for a reason. Don't, don't go back to Egypt. T touch your neighbor. Come to somebody say, don't go back. Somebody say, don't go back. Don't go back. They were romanticizing. And here, here it is. I, they, they needed to shift from grumbling to growing. They needed to shift from grumbling to growing. From grumbling to growing. Friends, we're in this new season. We're in a new normal. We're in a new normal. Stop the grumbling and let's start growing. Stop the grumbling and let's start growing. We ain't going back to what was. Oh, I wish we could go back to how it was. It'll never be like it was. It'll never be. So, 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 so mourn that. That's why we talked about yesterday, Monday morning. Mourn that, and you have moments. Grief comes in waves, so you have waves of of of, of grief. But I need you to get out of here. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. In order for you to grow from grumbling to growing, I need you to go from reacting to now responding. Stop reacting in your flesh and start responding in the spirit. I need you to grow up a little bit. I need you to grow up a little bit. Yeah, I need you to grow up. I need you to, to walk in some, some, some spiritual maturity and I need you to grow up a little bit. Stop reacting in the flesh and start responding in the spirit because the Lord has provided a way in this season. You just ain't found it yet because you're still reacting in your flesh. You're still grumbling. You're still talking about you. You're still talking about all your law and all, eh, and I can't, and I, and I want to get back. Stop. Stop. Come on. Stop. Stop. That season has transitioned. Grieve it, mourn it, but don't get stuck in it. I'm going to need some, I'm going to give y'all time to write that down. Grieve it, mourn it, don't get stuck in it. Yesterday is called yesterday for a reason. And God is doing something today. God is doing something today. This is your new normal. You ain't about to come out of this in five minutes. So I need you to see, God, how would you have me live in this new normal? And stop spending today's energy trying to get back to yesterday. He shifted you. There's been a shift John Howard, good morning. There's been a shift, John. There's been a shift. He shifted you from yesterday and has brought you in today. And watch this. He's a good God. He has provided for you today. But he's here trying to have an experience with you. And you keep looking back to what he did yesterday. He says, don't lock me into the to past season. That was just a season. I'm still good. I'm still God. And I ain't done yet. I'm still doing new things. There's a new season and there's a new work that I've come to do in this season. Don't be frustrated because you don't like the aesthetic. Don't, don't miss me because you don't like the aesthetic of the desert. You may not like the landscape. You may not like the aesthetic. You may not like the, the environment that you're in, but you need to see. I brought you here for a reason. Watch this. And then, and then he says, verse 11, Verse 10, let's go down. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at twilight, you will eat meat and in the morning you will be filled with bread. 
Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Oh, come on in here, Elena. Come on in here. He says, I'm gonna provide for you in the desert. I'm gonna give you meat in the I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you manna in the morning, I'm gonna give you bread in the morning, and I'm gonna give you meat at night. But watch this. He says, My 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 provision comes with the rhythm. And and if you miss my rhythm, you will miss my provision. My provision comes with the rhythm. Hey, cousin Tim, my, my, my provision, watch this. My, my provision comes is I'm going to give you man in the morning, meet at night. Man in the morning, meet at night. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Because we got some deep freezer, some deep freeze, freezer saints that will miss it. He says, don't store up. Don't get, a, don't get any more manna than what you could eat. Don't try to stock it up in a deep freezer. No deep freezer saints in this season because what I'm giving you is fresh and it's daily. It's got a rhythm to it. It's a daily rhythm that I'm giving you. It's a daily rhythm. It ain't on your time. Slow down. Ooh, I need this meat. I need this meat. No, 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 no. Stop coming to God for Red Bull. It ain't, it ain't, he ain't, you can, oh, give me some Red Bull. So I can run. No, 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 slow down. Moving too fast. Moving too fast. Slow down. I'm not giving you, I'm not giving you Red Bull. Uh, it's not time for you to stock up for the whole season. You can, you can stock up your freezer in your house, but your spiritual storage, he says, I need it to be emptied out daily. He says, because I'm giving you fresh word. I'm giving you fresh presence. So stop running. See, in the past, you know, we you, we just stock up on stuff from God. Ooh, I got a good run from God. Now I'm going to run from six months. And God, I'll check it back in with you if, if crisis comes. He says, no, I want to see you daily. So I want you to come out. And in the morning, I need you to look for me. I'm going to have bread. And you're going to eat it. You're going to be full. And then in the evening, I'm going to come out. I want you to come out. And in the evening, you're going to have me. So I want you dependent upon a daily rhythm for me to provide daily, twice a day. I want you coming up, looking at the sky, saying, Lord, and he says, here it is. So he, come, he says, I'm slowing you down in this season. I brought you to the desert to slow you down so that we can get on a kingdom rhythm. Because you've been running at the rhythm of the world and it's been running at a whole other pace. Uh oh, I lost my screen. I lost. A, I think I lost. No, I'm good. I lost, uh, I lost my uh, Instagram. I'm back now. Uh, he says, you've been running at the pace of the world. You've been running at the pace of the world. And he says, no, I need to slow you down. And I need to give you daily manna, daily bread, daily. Slow down unless you miss him. You've been trying to stock up. No deep freezer saints. It, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Sam's or Costco. You know, Sam's or Costco, you go and you can get a thing a mayonnaise this big and it's just got a gallon of mayonnaise and it's just big and it's just, you know what I mean? And it's enough mayonnaise to last me six, four for July's. Uh, no, 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 no. It, it's, it's like Whole Foods. Y'all got Whole Foods out there in, in, in where you live. You know, Whole Foods is just a grocery store where you just get fresh organic stuff. You just know you're going to pay $75 million for a banana, but it's just fresh organic stuff. Whole Foods is like this fresh organic thing. That's what God said. God says, I'm doing a fresh and organic thing in your life. So don't bring a Sam's mentality to a Whole Foods season. Come on in here, somebody. Come on, let me sip some coffee. Don't bring a Sam's mentality. Don't bring a Costco mentality to a Whole Foods season. He says, I'm doing something fresh in you. He says, I'm doing something fresh in you. He says, daily, there's a rhythm. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Some of you, have, some of you, you found a way to run fast in a time of quarantine. You didn't give yourself so many new goals and stuff. You already too busy. You already busy again. How you get busy again that quick? How you get that busy that quick? Slow down. I'm trying to do something fresh. 
something that you you would have never experienced in Egypt. You would have never experienced this in the last season. You would have you was in too much bondage with your calendar, with your business, with your money, with your job, with your relationship. You was in way too much bondage for you to experience fresh bread. You would have missed it half the week because you would have been gone by the time the manna fell. You would have already been in use in your flesh doing your own thing. Slow down. Somebody write slow down. Somebody write slow down. Somebody need to hear it today. Somebody need to hear it today. Slow down. God says, I want to meet you in the morning. I want to, I want to meet you in the evening. And I'm, and I'm coming with gifts. I'm a good God. I'm not coming empty handed. I'm coming with gifts. I'm going to bring you fresh bread. You ain't got to, you ain't got to go and throw out bread out the freezer. No, no, no. I got fresh bread. But oh, what if it, what if it, what, what? so here's, so here's the warning. So slow down, slow down. Slow down. God says, I'm trying to train you, to teach you. So when things, when the world speeds up again, you won't feel the pressure to run at the pace of the world because you've already been fixated on the rhythm of the kingdom. And you can be sustained by the rhythm of the kingdom and not run according to the pace of this world. He says, I'm training you to get you ready because, because the world slowed down and you've slowed down, but the world ain't going to stay slow. The world is trying to get back going as quickly as possible. But when the world starts running fast, you will, be, you will continue running at the pace of the kingdom of God. Because the manna ain't got to stop. The meat ain't got to stop. But you got to stop. You got to stop. Sit with him. Daily, I want to meet you. And watch this, watch this. He says, and if you try to store up too much, what you store up will go bad. If you try to operate in the kingdom according to your pace, everything you build won't last. Everything you try to do in this season that doesn't align with his rhythm, it won't last. It won't have sustainability. Folks, because he knows us. He knows us. We Instead of just grabbing one piece of manna that would have been enough for us to eat or grabbing what we could eat, we grabbed extra. We just grabbed extra. And everything extra went bad. Everything extra went bad. As a matter of fact, he says built into this season is rest. So he says, I'm going to provide it six days. On the seventh day, I ain't going to provide nothing. But watch this. On the sixth day, I'll give you enough for two days. So he says, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to provide for you. Stop reaching and grabbing for what I ain't giving. Stop reaching and grabbing for what I'm not giving. He says, I'm going to give you what you need for the day. And when I, when, we, when I take a day off, when everybody rests on the seventh day, you don't have enough for two days. Don't trip. You're good. But here's the danger. Here's the warning. And then I'm going to give you the good news. And then we're going to be out. Here's the warning. You can be in a season of abundance, but still live and experience scarcity. You can be in a season of abundance while still experiencing scarcity. You'll read it over around um, verse 24. He begins to talk about the Sabbath dynamic and how to handle that seventh day, how to handle that seventh day. And then what he says is, if he says, they heard that six days you can get enough for two people, you can get enough for two days. But you know what they did on the seventh day? Some of them went out anyway. They went out anyway on the seventh day. And the Bible says on the seventh day, they found nothing. They found nothing. So to them, they experienced scarcity while they were living in a season of abundancy, abundancy because they didn't walk in alignment with the kingdom. If you don't align yourself with the kingdom rhythm of God, you will be in a season where God is providing full abundance but you will experience scarcity and nothing because you showed up on the wrong day. You showed up on the, in the wrong day, on the wrong day, and you showed up in the wrong way. And if you show up on the wrong day and you show up in the wrong way, you will miss the abundance and the provision of God. You will walk outside and you'll be like, ain't nothing out here. It's empty. Ain't that you will find nothing. I love it. I love it. Bet, uh, 
uh, uh, Becky Becky White, a pastor at our church, she she pointed this out. She says she says, and they went out and they found nothing. How can you be in a season where God is literally dropping meat and manna from heaven? Can you imagine the day walking up? Oh, meat and manna falling from heaven, just on the ground. This way, in a season of full abundance. And you sleep through that. And you wake up and go out on the seventh day and ain't nothing out there. Your neighbor experiencing abundance and you experiencing scarcity because you miss the season. You sleeping when you should be woke. You, 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 you reach in when you should be resting. You, you, you still, you still in Egypt. You still acting like a slave when God has made you free. Will you stop acting like a slave? You've got a master now. You've got a king who provides for you, not a king who takes from you. So you, you, you're so used to abuse. You're so used to the abusiveness of this world. You're so used to being in an abusive relationship, you don't even know how to receive the grace and the manner of God. You're still trying to hustle. The hustle is over. You ain't got to hustle. Just rest. You ain't got to hustle for the manner. Just rest in the manner. You don't have to hustle. Just come on, let's announce it. The hustle is over. Come on, let's put it in the comments. The hustle is over because some of you... You are trying to hustle your way in this season. And this ain't the season to hustle. You in Costco hustling. You, you in the spiritual Costco trying to figure out what's going on. And what is it? You, you hustling. And the, God said the hustling is over. I brought you out of Egypt. You're no longer a slave. Stop acting like it. Jay Bowling, the hustle is over. It ain't the time to hustle. Stop acting like a slave. God has brought you into freedom. God has brought you into deliverance. Quenisha, God has brought you into deliverance. Can you act like a free person? Wake up in the morning. That's fresh manna. God's going to provide. God, is, he's moving you from grumbling to growing. He's moving you from reacting to responding in the spirit. Wake up every morning ready to respond in the spirit of God. Say, God, what you got for me today? Where's the manna today? By the evening time, my kids and got on my nerves. God, where's the meat this evening? Where is it? God, I'm walking with you. I'm trusting in you. I'm not hustling anymore. I'm slowing down and I'm ready to receive. Don't miss it or else you're going to go outside and there's going to be scarcity. It ain't going to be nothing. And you're going to wonder what happened. You see in other testimonies all across the board, but ain't nothing happening in your life is because you showed up on the wrong day in the wrong way. Here's the good news. All right, here we go. Here's the good news. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm ready to close it out. The good news, y'all, is found in verse 10. Verse 10. Highlight it. Circle it. Write it down. This is our word for this day. Come on. I'm going to read it again. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert. They looked in the desert where they had to go. And there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The glory of the Lord is in the desert. We may be walking through the desert. You may not like the cosmetic, but I'm telling you the glory of the Lord is here. And if the glory of the Lord is here, that's all we need. The glory brings the manna. The glory brings the meat. The, the glory brings my early retirement of my hustling. I don't have to hustle anymore. I get to rest and meet God and allow him to provide for me. The glory of the Lord is in this desert. The glory of the Lord is in this quarantine. The glory of the Lord is in this season. Don't miss the glory. He's rewriting your story in the midst of his glory. He's giving you a new normal. He is doing it in this season. Don't miss the glory. They saw the glory in this season. I need you to get eyes to see the glory in this season. The glory of the Lord is here. Oh, I wish I could preach in this chair. I want to encourage you. The good news is, yes, it's a whole bunch of stuff here. Corona's here. Uh, there's famine, there's death, there's sickness here. And God can hold all of that in his hands. But I'm telling you, in the midst of all of that, everything else that CNN told you was here, I need to tell you what God says is here. And he says his glory is here. Don't miss it. Don't show up in the wrong day in the, on the, in the wrong way. Don't, don't miss it. The glory of the Lord is here. And that's your good news for today. Woo! The glory of the Lord is here. Everything is going to be okay. Because the glory of the Lord is here. The glory of the Lord is here. That's your good news today. Go have a good day. See the glory. Get eyes. 
see the glory. Look for the glory of the Lord. Ah, I'm breathing this morning. Ah, the glory of the Lord is here. I got the activity of my limbs this morning. The glory of the Lord is here. Ah, my family is alive. The glory of the Lord is here. I've got eternal security in the good news of Jesus. The glory of the Lord is here. Because the glory of the Lord is here, everything's going to be okay. That's the good news for today. That's the good news for today. Uh, I pray that y'all have a good week. Pray that y'all have a good morning. Join me tomorrow. Join me tomorrow. We're going to be back tomorrow. Um, but just know that the glory of the Lord is here. And his goodness is running after you. I'm going to bring Larissa back just for a little bit here. Y'all walk home with this. Go on now. Good morning, Nathan. What's up, bro? Hey, y'all share this with your share this with your friends. Share this with your loved ones. Tell them the glory of the Lord is here. The glory is in this desert. The glory is in this desert. What's up, Jay Bird? The glory is in this desert. And in the desert, his goodness is running after us. Hey, Kim, thank you so much. Tim. I hear you, Kyla. We're going to get it out to y'all. We're going to get it out. Thanks, Kiana. I'm having a ball. You can tell, huh? You can tell I'm having fun. Marco, what's up, bro? Thank you, Keisha. Love you, girl. Thanks so much for our theme song. Thanks, Chastity. Am I crazy or was Jay Bowling up in here? What a, what? Jay Bowling, one of the greatest fashion stylists. I was so honored that he came through. Oh, uh, come on, y'all lift those hearts. This is the moment right here. This is it right here. This is our benediction. Lift the hearts. Good morning, Aura. God is so good. Trish. Nikki, God is so good. Desiree. God bless y'all. Y'all have a good day.